Okay. Shinta, so basically last week we, we went through the schematic. So we got a microcontroller, ESP, that's going to be the brains. The USB, CPT 104. Uh, it's just how we're going to program it. So it takes the USB to serial communication. Just making sure the music is not copyrighted. Uh, a battery charger. So that's going to charge our battery. That's a voltage regulator taking our battery voltage from 4.2 volts to 3.3 volts. We've got the accelerometer that is going to sense if I'm tilting. So this is the X, Y, Z. So if I tilt a bit, it will tell my, my, my controller push up, change direction. These are H bridges that will control the motors. So two on each. And then our motors. But yeah, so there is a long video you can go and rewind a bit. But yeah, it's, it's quite long. So if there's anything unclear, please just ask. If you have reason, ask questions why this, why that, why that, please ask. Why, why, why? Uh, Nico, I'm just using a, I think it's an i7, third generation, low graphics card, I think. I don't know actually. Uh, but it's not a high spec. It, the software, any PC should be able to run. The only part that might become an issue is the 3D rendering. That's really not needed. Uh, uh, local boy, you're talking about, oh, what am I doing? Talking about these? Uh, I think those are the only transistors we have here. Yeah? So, um, no, so, so these transistors are, the ESP needs to go in a certain sequence to be programmed. So I don't know if you guys ever bought the ESP module, uh, development board. Some of them come with automatically being able to program it and some come with two buttons, enable and boot. So with the CPT-104, your signals DTR and RTS, that can be set to let your mic controller know you're being programmed now. So when you plug this into the Arduino IDE, it will start programming. These bits will like toggle and then it will pull either my GPO high or low and then reset. So these pins on the ESP32 needs to be a certain uh, certain state before I can program it. So this is just for programming. This is not for anything else. Hey, kamikaze. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to for brush. Um, we can. A brush motor should be able to be able to control by HP as well. So this just should be interchanged. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I heard they don't last too long. But they are cheap for the concept. It depends what you want to do. So if you want a, a drone that's going to last two years, I don't think this is going to be the perfect drone. <laughs> I honestly think you'll be able to buy one better, but it's just concept. Build it yourself, right? It's quite fun to make something yourself. Right, so this is my ESP32. Um, you can see here at this side here, they've got like a keypad zone. So this keypad zone is because the ESP32 comes with a little um, antenna at the end. So it's quite nice for the ESP32. This is actually not the, yeah. So the ESP32 has chips inside there, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and they close and make a Faraday's cage. So they already made the antenna for us. So antenna design, you always don't want any copper underneath. You don't want routing because it can mess up with the communication. And you always want it to be on the side of a board. Most, most of the times you want it on the edge of a board and you would like a cutout at the bottom. That's just how I put um, RF design. I have put this ESP32 in the middle of the board with no cutouts and it works fine. But good practice for high speed and frequencies and stuff. Always at the edge of the board, board cut out and no copper underneath. So this is just like, I want to get on the edge there. So it's irritating me that I can't get, boom, oh, not like that. If I change the grid, make it smaller. I like working on a 10 or 5, not less than 5. Hey Kamikaze, no problem. Thanks for joining, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, join our Discord if you haven't. We can chat there as well. So I, I always just roughly put things in where I think they'll probably be. It will change later. So our motors will be in corner, right? So our drones, motors are in corners. This H bridge controls two of them and this J1J2. So I'm just trying to keep them together. You can see there it says PCB edge. So USB normally needs to be a bit over so you can plug it in. So here you can see we're going to be busy with the USB. So a cool thing is that if I click on it, it highlights it. So it's always nice to make sure the components that, that's what make these blocks as well. So the components in these blocks should be close to, close to one another. So if I click on it, I move it close to where it's supposed to be so it's because you don't want the tracks to be as long as possible i can put it over here but then i have to root all the way there so that's not what you want i'll make it pretty later but as you can see so these white lines are called rat nests so they just tell me that i we have to connect things so i'll get there later but if i just do this now 
it will tell me how to go all the way there. So my V pad connects. I can turn it off here on the left hand side. On and off. So let's turn it off. It looks nicer, easier. See, so I like to keep the ratness because if I have the ratness and I move, I can see that white line where it's going to go. So it's nice and close. It looks messy, but it has its purposes. It's quite a good opportunity to talk about decoupling capacitors. So these capacitors are connected to 3 volt 3 and ground. But 3 volt 3 and ground is all over my circuit, should I say. I've got 3 volts somewhere here and ground. But I need, I want these capacitors close to this chip. That's why it's in this block. So the coupling capacitors you want as close as possible to the chip you're working with. So that's why it's nice to click. See, okay, this C8 must be close to U2. So then I can take it close to U2. If that makes sense. This labels that we created is quite nice because we actually can see the name on the PCB. So D plus D4. So these nets here are just not connected. So you'll see net C7. So it's the net capacitor C7 pad 1. See, I don't, I don't have... So now it's saying my net C7, which is my capacitor, pad 1, which is this side. So I did not give it a label, so it doesn't give a name, which is not the end of the world. So these lines will just take the shortest route to where it's supposed to go. But then when we route it, um, it will tell us where to go. So I do try to place it that I can make it the shortest possible. So yeah, so that looks nice, right? Because, no, let me. But we are going to get rid of all the white lines when we start routing. For now, I just want to place them together. So everyone in this box, I want to place close to each other. That is my goal. If that makes sense. To move anything, you just push M. So there's a lot of stuff that the people at manufacture the board use, like uh, fabrication. So if I F fab, so 100R, then they'll, they'll use that, but it won't be on the PCB. So the only thing that's on the PCB is the salt layer, which is F salt. So this is on the PCB. So I'm just going to hide, hide the fab, so I don't have that. So my silk is what's on the PCB, my copper is used, and my mask is the opening, but we'll get there, we'll get there. So this is ugly, I don't want this, so I can hide it. You don't need to know the MPN of the on the PCB. Now it's away. To get in this uh, 3D view, just push Alt 3. So I just click on all components to make sure that everything's together. So it seems that everything in this block is. Uh, there's only thing about this is like this CP2104 and the USB, the D minus D plus are always crisscross. So I see if you go tools. Tools update. Here's a update footprint, and then you can just update the footprints if you change anything. Otherwise, it doesn't update it. 